tell us a bit about this ongoing study that you're engaged with on sanctions and the porous nature of, of that border there and what that means. Sure. Uh, so financial sanctions right now is the primary policy tool uh, that I think many countries and international organizations are using to deal with North Korea. Uh, if you think of it as a medicine, it is being overprescribed right now. And so my uh, focus on this research topic was uh, what is the real impact of applying financial sanctions? The uh, policy definition of it is that it raises transaction costs. It makes life very difficult for North Korean state trading companies and North Korean individuals uh, to do business, to uh, do their money generating activities in the past. And the hope is that in doing that, you change the environment for their decision making, and ultimately they'll see the path of a negotiated settlement uh, as being much more viable than continuing along the path of further nuclear uh, proliferation and engaging illicit activities. So it's not just nuclear negotiation centric. There are other illicit activities where those particular sanctions measures will only be lifted if those illicit activities, uh, the North Koreans cease engaging in those illicit activities. Uh, but the, the core question here is, uh, what are the unintended consequences? Very objectively, what are the unintended consequences of financial sanctions? Uh, some of my preliminary research uh, looks at the uh, growth of private Chinese companies acting as middlemen for North Korean state trading companies that are, in some, many cases, the focus of these sanctions. Uh, with that type of transaction, uh, there are three key points. One is that increasingly these transactions are happening inside of China in the Chinese national economy. Uh, there are heightened levels of commission fees that private Chinese companies now demand of North Korean state trading companies. And the prices of certain items are also very high. Uh, that's, that's not new. In other cases where we've seen the application of sanctions, that's usually uh, the impetus for the growth of underground economies and so forth. And they create legacy issues. But that phenomenon isn't new. What's different in this case is that we have a globalizing Chinese economy. And by that, I mean foreign companies no longer just export to the Chinese market. They're uh, setting up production facilities inside of China for the Chinese uh, market. And with that, the North Korean state trading companies no longer really have to go to the four corners of the world to procure or sell high value items. They merely have to contract with a private Chinese company. And the private Chinese company is a very important enabler in this. The bottom line in all of this is that financial sanctions lead to private Chinese companies usually demanding higher commission fees to do a transaction for a North Korean state trading company. And that, in turn, attracts more sophisticated and well-connected private Chinese companies to the point that, in practice, North Korean state trading companies now have the opportunity to rent the capabilities of these middlemen. And that is a function that didn't exist before. And this activity is increasing in an environment where we're seeing the application of more financial sanctions. So there's an inverse uh, relationship that I think merits much more research. Mm -hmm. and, and so if you are in North Korea and you're trying to purchase, for example, German agricultural equipment from China uh, that may be built in China, that is a definite possibility regardless of what, say, the German parent company might think of that or the enforcement question. That, that I think is a growing reality. And so uh, German companies, European companies, especially those who are involved in things like industrial equipment, uh, manufacturing and whatnot, a North Korean state trading company uh, in many respects merely has to go across the border, uh, engage a private Chinese company in a contract. They go so far as to take out insurance on the uh, transport of whatever uh, merchandise that they uh, purchase. So it, it follows legitimate channels in a way. But the key point is that when the private Chinese company goes to that European company to procure uh, this industrial equipment, uh, the European company really believes that it's just sold something to a Chinese company. Chinese company. Uh, so this is a type of activity in this particular instance, I think has implications in terms of proliferation. Uh, but in other areas, uh, in terms of the banned luxury goods, uh, as you have living standards and wealth increasing in certain parts of China, uh, they mirror the luxury tastes of the elites in North Korea. So again, going across the border, procuring cognac and other items that are banned uh, is relatively straightforward.